my shopping guide to buying spices. When I buy my spice, I only want the best, and it always pays to get expert advice. Birgit Erath has been selling every spice under the sun in London's Notting Hill for over 20 years, so she really knows what she's talking about. I love spices, the smell, the texture, the colour. Spices are so versatile. Something very, very simple it can be really transformed into something really delicious. With thousands of aromatic ingredients on her shelves, if it smells good, she sells it. If you buy spices, buy them whole. Then you can try roast them, grind them when you need them, and then they will release the essential oils. Whole spices you can keep for years. Give them a good bushing <laughs> wine bottle with your rolling pin or whatever, and you see there is still aroma, and you can taste it, you smell it, then it's fine. There's four main spices. One is sweet, one is sour, one is bitter, and one is hot. This is cinnamon. And that is really a great example of a sweet spice. When you buy a cinnamon quill like this, you have to check that you have loads of different layers in here. Then you can either grind this or you'd break a piece off. I mean, this doesn't smell of anything now, but if you roll it in your hand, just quickly like this, and then you smell it again. This is just unbelievable. If you have spaghetti bolognese, put a pinch of cinnamon in it to bring out the flavor. So Mark, this is one of those really special spices. Sour, like a lemon, but it has a salty aftertaste. I use this anywhere from marinades to salad. You haven't lived unless you tried it. A great example for a bitter spice would actually be uh, turmeric. This is actually a root. It grows in the ground like ginger. Use it very, very sparingly. About that much will actually color you a curry or a rice dish, wonderful yellow. Watch your fingers, you get really yellow fingers from it. And then we come to the hot spices. One spice that I couldn't miss, and that is Hungarian paprika. Paprika is the powdery form of a bell pepper. What makes the Hungarian paprika different is that they actually grow it on vineyards. It's sort of between the vines. It has a, a sweetness and it has a sharpness to it. I have it in ice cream, I have it on fish, I have it everywhere. Birgit's spot on about the power of spices to transform dishes, whether savoury or sweet. Here's my quick guide to the spices I use most. Black pepper. This is the spice I couldn't do without. Always buy it whole and grind yourself so you get the freshest flavour. Cardamom. These pods come in green or black types and have a fantastic spicy sweet taste. Brilliant for everything from curries to rice dishes and puddings. Coriander. These citrusy seeds are perfect whole in pickles or grind to use in fragrant stews and soups. Cumin, a savory spice that's pungent and nutty. It's great in marinades for delicious meat and fish. Then cinnamon, sweetly fragrant and great with apples or in cakes. And nutmeg, warm and spicy, it's delicious in a bechamel sauce. Finally, saffron. These sweet strands infuse a brilliant bright red color and are great in risottos, and even though it's more expensive than gold, a pinch goes a long, long way. Store your spices properly, and they'll last for years. You keep it airtight in a tin or in a glass jar in your cupboard. Don't be scared of spices, like an aftershave or a perfume. You have to select it yourself. It has to fit in with your taste and with your kitchen. Supermarkets and good local shops sell an amazing array of different spices, so there's no excuse for not being adventurous. Be bold, find what you like, and spice up your cooking. Marinating the lamb first. Chilies, we're going to use a mixture of red and green. Take off the tops and just slice in. Garlic, crushed. Don't worry about chopping these ultra fine, just get it in there. Cooking for up to three hours, everything sort of blends and almost sort of purees itself together. Smoked paprika goes brilliantly well with the chilies. Two teaspoons in. A touch of dried oregano. Some little cumin seeds. The blend and the fragrance that they give out is extraordinary. They release a little oil as well and helps to tenderize the lamb. A touch of salt. Pepper, cinnamon. That sort of sweetens up the lamb. Olive oil, just a tablespoon. And the olive oil helps to sort of 
stick all those wonderful spices to the lamb. Jump in, just start really rubbing. At this stage, you can leave the lamb to marinate for anything from half an hour to overnight, allowing the spices to really penetrate the meat, giving amazing results when you tuck in. Delicious. Vegetables, carrots and onions. And that's it. Sliced. Secret of slicing vegetables for braising is not getting too thin. You slice the onions too thin, they burn. You've got that horrible char taste on that slow braised. Braising is just a chef's term that means cooking in liquid on a low heat, making the meat incredibly moist and beautifully tender. So the secret of braising is having a really nice, thick, durable pan. Get that nice and hot. Just a touch of olive oil. Lamb in, hold the bone, because you're in control then into the pan. I want that white fat to start rendering, so it'll add more fat, therefore making it a lot more flavoursome as it braises. Chilies, cinnamon in, mix that up. And don't be scared, you're not burning this, you're sort of searing the lamb shanks, and this is the important part right at the very beginning. We're going to have colour on the lamb, which washes off as it braises in the oven, so be generous with that colour. Vegetables in. Wow. And then a couple of bay leaves. So now you lift the lamb up and get the lamb sat on top of the vegetables. Now, you glaze the pan with red wine. The glazing means that you're, you're cleaning the bottom of the pan and you're getting that amazing flavour washed off and lifted up into that sauce. It can really transform that dish. Always the glaze. Then bring to the boil and cook for about 10 minutes to reduce. The wine's reduced down by half. Now for the stock. Bring that stock back up to the ball and then into the oven. Now, don't cover it. When you cover it, all the condensation comes off the lid. Your lamb becomes grey. All this effort and that exciting spice gets washed away. No lid and into the oven for three hours. A slow cook on a low heat of 160 degrees gives the spices time to work and transform the meat so it's mouth-wateringly tender. Now, look at those. Out on to a plate. You can just see that meat sliding down. Juicy and incredibly tender. Grab it by the, the shank, roll them around that rich, delicious sauce. Look at that. You can get your sauce nice. Beautiful. Just get some mint. Don't chop it. Just pick that fresh mint and let it snow. And there you go, a very spicy, delicious, melting in the mouth, lamb shank. Amazing.